So welcome back students, so we will continue with module 2. So in the previous lecture uh, we have seen the coal gasification process. So we have seen what are the reactions involved and the thermodynamics involved in it. We have seen both the reactions homogeneous heterogeneous and then we have also seen the steam reforming reactions. So continuing with that once the process is known now to the technology part. Technology part means you have to design a gasifier. So today's lecture we will be focusing on the construction and design of coal gasifier. So what in this lecture what we will do gasification technology briefly we will uh, touch down on gasification technology. Then primarily we will be discussing three different gasifiers the moving bed gasifier, the fluidized bed gasifier and the entrain flow gasifier. So the all these are gasifiers which are now currently used in our industries. So they will use any one of these but out of these three the entrain flow gasifier is the one which can handle all types of coal while the other two other than the entrained ones have some limitation regarding the component present within the coal. But this one entrained flow gasifier will take it in detail all types of coal. So coal you must be knowing the types bituminous, anthracite, lignite all it can handle every type of coal. So let us first start with the moving bed gasifier. So the moving bed gasifier or we can also say Lurgi or Sassol Lurgi moving bed gasifier both means the same. This is the company which has made this uh, design. The, it is a moving bed gasifier, it is run counter currently. So what it does is coal enters the gasifier at the top and is slowly heated and dried. So there is a partial pyrolysis. So if you remember the pyrolysis network we discussed in the previous lecture, if the complete pyrolysis means you keep them at constantly at high temperature for a sufficient amount of time then it becomes a complete pyrolysis. A partial pyrolysis means you do not keep at a long time but you keep the temperature to be low. So as it descends, so it is something like this, the coal is coming from the top and the steam is coming from the bottom. So steam and you need to provide the heat for the endothermic reaction with steam you provide oxygen as well. So steam and oxygen you are sent from the bottom or air and coal. So it is counter current operation. So obviously when the coal comes from the top the coal will be getting slowly heated because the amount of uh, temperature you are providing is from the bottom. So as it descends the coal is heated and devitalized further because as you go down and down the first the initially the gasification reaction will take place so and then you have the combustion reaction. So gasification reaction I assume you must be knowing this. So you have this coal C plus just just want to recollect the gasification reactor you form syngas. So these syngas because these are uh, volatile in nature they will escape from the top of the gasifier. Then you can also have what you know the another reaction because CO2 is formed from the uh, homogeneous reaction. So you have the CO2 reacting with coal to form more of CO. So all these reactions are the uh, gasification reaction they will take place at the immediately after it is defaulted light and enters the gasification. The remaining coal, the remaining coal what is there it will be burnt with oxygen. So you have this carbon plus oxygen you will have producing lot of carbon dioxide. So these are the another reactions where heat is liberated. So that is the way it does, so obviously the temperature is the highest at the bottom of the reactor. So let us see the basic design of this Lurgi moving bed gasifier. So you have the gasifier something like this, so you have a hopper where you feed the coal, okay. You have the hopper where the coal is fed, these are the coal particles you fed them from the top. Then what you do, there is you introduce into one of the I mean a jack as another vessel is there. So there is a vessel here where you keep on feeding the coal. Then there is a provision of providing both oxygen and steam. So oxygen and steam is sent from the top. So steam or water whatever you can say steam is sent from the bottom. Then uh, what it is you have a rotating grate. Okay, a rotating grate. So it keeps on rotating. Why? I'll tell you. There is what you call as the rotating grate. Okay, this is a rotating grate. 
then what it is then the vessel ends here but what is remaining after the coal has been combusted or gasified ash particles. So, this ash particle assuming it them to be a solid they will get collected here. So, what it does this rotating particles it will only allow the ash particles to pass through it. So, you will have a ash hopper. ash hopper. So, in this weight what you have is you have the coal hopper for providing the coal. So, here you have the coal cut into certain sizes coal particles. So, you have the coal hopper here just to feeding the coal ok, feeling the coal. Then you have a jacket to control the temperature because why I tell you this is a jacket to control the temperature at this end. So, this is a jacket. So, you have a jacket steam the purpose of providing steam or jacket steam is you have to cool down the temperature because if the temperature is very high it may actually destroy the internals of the gasifier. To avoid that the easiest way is to apply more of steam. So, here you control this oxygen to steam ratio that is the importance. So, then what you have is you have a water jacket also here somewhere water jacket ok. So, the syngas then will come out from here syngas we primarily we are used this gas produced is primarily through endothermic or exothermic reaction it is syngas. So, you have the hopper. So, you have uh, some you can you can say some distributor. So, this will come and deposit here this is the coal particles. So, all these coal particles once they are deposited here they are getting combusted. So, if they are getting combusted so there will be three zones first is while they are uh, descending I will told you this descending zone there is partial pyrolysis. Then uh, it comes the gasification zone, the gasification occurs and finally, at the lower part of the reactor the combustion occurs. So, you have combustion then gasification. So, this is the raw hot syngas coming outside and uh, this is a rotating grate. So, now you must understand that this is the coal is fed from the top and oxygen and steam is sent from the bottom. So, here you have the ash content. So, ash cotton will come out here and this is the way the design is made. So, the temperature here is in this part around 1300 Kelvin near about, but the important is that this temperature there should be uh, less than you can say less than this 1300 Kelvin. Why? Because if it is less than 1300 Kelvin then it will be not come into the liquid state ok the liquid state. So, if it comes to the liquid state then the problem is uh, the it will not be able to work you cannot remove the ash it will get stuck in the rotating grate. So, there have been improvement in the design where it been able to use above 1300 Kelvin, but the issue is then you have to change the internal. So, here the internal is able to withstand a temperature of only 1300 Kelvin ok. So, the heat if you see the rate of the heating is around uh, what are the reactions happening primarily combustion this is C plus O2 is CO2. So, it will have the plus some delta amount of heat is generated with the heat of reaction and uh, then uh, you have uh, the reaction as I told you C plus H2O to give CO plus H2 ok. So, these are the two reactions which is occurring. Moving ahead. So, what we have seen just let us highlight those points. The highest temperature is obtained in the combustion zone around the reactor base. So, finally, when everything is being combusted, so ash is all that remains of the initial coal. Now, for majority coals 1300 Kelvin this temperature you should keep in mind which is lower than the slagging temperature. Slagging means when the ash content becomes molten state. So, it will slag. So, it is very difficult to separate them out from the gasifier. So, it is the temperature where the mineral stuff gets sticky or even melts. So, we should avoid this temperature. So, the ash so, if you do this then ash leaving the reaction zone is dry. So, the coal bed as I have just seen in the previous slide the coal bed is supported by a spinning grate through which the ash is cooled by releasing heat to the incoming steam and oxygen. In order to safeguard the interior of the reactor so to because the temperature is very high in the reactor base the temperature must be maintained at a low value. I mean you cannot be very low because you do not need to do at 100 or 200, 300 Kelvin 
you keep in mind you have to have a temperature less than 1300 Kelvin. Excessive, so how do you make it low? You send steam. So, what you if you add steam, so you are reducing the combustion reaction. Why? Because if you add steam, your partial pressure will decrease because you are sending another gas to it. So, that is the way they control the temperature. But then uh, if it is true, then it will also affect the conversion because not all coal will get combusted. So, you need to have a proper trade off. So, how much amount of steam and oxygen because it should not be like in the ash content you have more of mineral water like unconverted carbon also coming out. So, you should you know to make a temperature in such a manner you choose the ratio of oxygen and steam and try to the, keep the temperature below 1300 Kelvin. So, there are some obviously you have the design there will be some advantages some disadvantages. So, for this time let us see the disadvantages first because it has more number of disadvantages as compared to advantages. Now, issue is large quantities of byproducts are formed. So, I have shown here only syn gas, but there are other gases also formed. What are those? These are condensable hydrocarbons. It means once the gas phase is exiting from the top of the reactor, if you condense them, they will form condensable hydrocarbons, phenols, ammonia tars, oil. So, the composition is very varied, naphtha, then dust. So, it means that uh, if you want to clean this, because these gases would have been inside the gasifier. The cleaning of this gas is a very cumbersome job. So, the gas cleaning for the process is considerably more complex than for other gasification methods. But the greatest advantage, what is the advantage? The energy efficiency of the process is enhanced because of the counter current operation. So, most of the carbon or the coal particles is either combusted or because or it been converted to syngas. So, if it is combusted, it is converted to CO2 and the CO2 will again be useful for converting to carbon monoxide as an endothermic reaction. So, most of them is converted. So, going on with the disadvantage, what is that? It cannot process all form of coals. So, there is a concept of the coal if it is reactive or unreactive. So, it depends upon if it is reactive or unreactive because some coals may become sticky, the coal will become sticky when heated and it will create agglomerate. So, if they are agglomerate, they will never be able to allow to perform the entire gasifier, it will block because the rotating rate will be blocked. So, obviously, it increases the pressure drop and possibly reactor clogging. So, those coke or coal particles which are sticky, they are known as caking coals because they form cake. So, there has been an improvement. So, British gas along with Lurgi, they have designed a new gasifier called the slagging gasifier in which the temperature in the combustion zone is above 2000 Kelvin. So, now you are converted into liquid form. So, if you are converted to liquid form, then it becomes easier. So, to remove the all ash content, to permit the utilization of such a high temperature because 2000 Kelvin is pretty high, the reactor design has to be modified. So, standard Lugi reactor, it has a grate because temperature is not that high, it is only 1300 Kelvin, that is why it has a grate. But the gasifier which has been a modified version will not have a grate, but it will have a combustion zone without those internals. So, in the slagging gasifier, so steam usage is substantially reduced. Why? Because you do not have to send an extra amount of steam to modify the temperature. Okay? That is one big advantage. There is another advantage which is the quality of ash which I will take up later. Then comes the fluidized bed gasifier. This is also called as the Winkler fluidized bed gasifier. So, this is a back mix reactor in which the coal particles in the feed and coal particles undergoing gasification are thoroughly combined. So, gasification you must be knowing coal gasification it means you have the both the endothermic and the exothermic reaction combined in a single gasifier, but here the coal particles are in the form of fluid. So, they are given certain velocity so that they behave like a fluidized state, so remain on the fluidized state. So, the issue when they remain in a fluidized state, it gives excellent mass and heat transfer from the intense mixing. So, gasifier here, the gasifier the easiest way is it runs at standard atmospheric pressure and a moderate temperature. When I say moderate temperature, this temperature will be high because combustion is, you should not think that it is room temperature, no. Room temperature coal is absolutely non-reactive. So, it means that 
you modify means you do not get above 2000 something like that, the temperature needs to be controlled. The majority of the char particles, so now the issue is when the fluidization happens, there are char particles because it is the fluidized state, they will try to leave the reactor without actually having any reaction or they may not have sufficient residence time for the reaction to initiate. So, they may leave the reactor with the product gas. For that, a cyclone is provided so that they return it to the reactor. Okay. So, a cyclone what it will do? It will allow the gas to pass through product gas while it will return the char particles. Okay. So, that is the function of cyclone. Okay. So, now at the bottom of the reactor obviously the dry ash will be emitted. So, let us see the brief description of a fluidized bed gasifier. So, in the fluidized bed gasifier you uh, like uh, before you have a column. So, you have a column here and then you have a cyclone attached to it. So, just some modification required. So, then the vessel goes like this. Okay. So, then while it comes down, it will again have a great grid so that the carbon particles do not fall down. This grid is written, is it attached for the ash exit. So, the ash exits out from here. So, the grid is provided so that the carbon particles or the coal particles does not fall down. Then uh, you have a provision this is what you are right we are again entering. So, you have a oxygen or steam entering from the bottom. Okay. Now, where do you send the feed? You send the feed through here. Okay. So, something like this some hopper is there where the coal particles is already present. So, you slowly send them with a fixed flow rate. Okay. So, this is called crushed coal. Okay. So, you have to crush them into certain size then only you will be increased. Why? Because as the particle size is smaller, more will be the mixing, more will be the reaction, rate of reaction. So, you have the crushed coal, then what you do is you while it sends out here, it goes go through a screw and conveyor. Okay. So, this is called a feed screw. So, now all this reactions will be happening here, you have the fluidized coal inside. Now, some may escape here, okay. some may escape here. So, you do not allow them to escape. So, there is a cyclone kept here. So, what you do? You send it back to the, so it is the remaining the char particles you are sending and uh, whatever you have is here and the product is raw syngas. So, this is the cyclone. Okay. So, this is your grid. Okay. So, you have the crushed coal coming inside, reaction happening inside the fluidized bed, then the char is separated from the cyclone and the raw gas, syn gas is sent at the top. The conversion is very good. Because sometimes what happens is uh, the conversion is good because you have to keep the residence time. Here you can control the residence time because the residence time is important for the coal particles so that they react to the full extent. So, obviously, these factors will come into the mind how you feed the coal, rate of feeding the coal and also how you keep the residence time and what is the heating rate or what is the heat you are providing. So, this is called the fluidized bed uh, reactor or sometimes it is called as the uh, Winkler. Winkler fluidized bed reactor. Okay. So, let us now summarize what we have studied. So, because of the back mixed nature of the reactor, issue is as I told you some char may get out of the system or out of the gasifier. So, considerable amount of unreacted carbon are removed from the product gas. Okay, fine, you can take away the char because of their molecular weight are heavier, but some of them still may escape. 
or it can escape from the ash. So it may reduce the conversion. So whatever coal you are feeding as an inlet, lesser amount is going or lesser amount or some part of it is going either through the product gas or through the ash. So the conversion is reducing. So most efficient fluidized bed reactors currently available is able to convert by 97%. Okay, you may say the 97% is very huge, but still those gasifiers which are currently in operation is close to 100% or 99% operation. So even if it is 3% less than 100%, so it means you are losing a lot of coal particles from the ash or in the product gas. Now this as disadvantage is magnified when you have less reactive coal. So what do you mean by less reactive coal? Means it, the coal should be, the surface should be such that it should be able to react with the incoming steam or oxygen. So if it does not react, it very becomes difficult. So it may easily escape. So if you have less reactive coal, this is not at all suggested. This gasifier not at all adopted. So because if with a low, less reactive cal or with a coal with having a low ash melting point. So if you have a low ash melting point, then the, some part may be liquid. So then uh, it is not possible to do a fluidization state. Fluidization state means a fluid state. So highly reactive coal is thus, highly reactive coal is the ideal feed for the fluidized bed gasifier. So what are those coal which are highly reactive? They are called as lignite. So they are brown coal, geologically extremely young brown coal or lignite is highly functionalized and as a result very reactive. Okay. So those brown coal you can use the fluidized bed gasifier. So you know in uh, India, in Tamil Nadu, we have the Neyveli Lignite Corporation. So this is one, of the, one such plant which uses the lignite as the source of the coal uh, to generate power. In Tamil Nadu, the Neyveli is the place. Okay. So this is uh, one of the company which uses such gasifier. So what is the take home message? As a result of the restricted carbon conversion in the fluidized bed gasifier, the ash particles contain a significant quantity of unconverted carbon. Now what they do, okay, I am using fluidized bed, but still there is unconverted. What do they do? They burn it. That is the easiest way. You burn them off. That is what these feed are sent to a boiler system where carbon is burned to generate heat for steam production. So you generate those carbon particles which are leaving the gasifier they are burnt. So after they are burnt, gasification occurs, heat is liberated. This heat liberated is then used to make steam. In all the fluidized bed reactor, this additional step is required. Okay? This is very important. Now the third type of gasifier. The first gasifier was the Lurgi. In the Lurgi, I was told there are two types of one capable of 1300 Kelvin gasifier, another capable of 2000 Kelvin. So in the 2000 Kelvin, we do not have any rotating grate. That is the difference. And in second one, what we've just now discussed is the Winkler fluidized bed gasifier. This is the third one, which is called the entrained flow gasifier. So name is based about the inventors. This is a copper Stutzek, a copper Stutzek entrained flow gas gasifier. So it's a sometimes a it's a plug flow device. So in which the coal particles react concurrently at atmospheric pressure with steam and oxygen. The reactor has a brief residence duration of a few seconds. So the duration of the coal particle inside the reactor is few seconds. This is just so that the temperature does not rise exponentially. So high temperatures which are possible are utilized to increase the coal conversion. The issue is with a short residence time but at a high temperature, only carbon monoxide and hydrogen is formed, leaving away all the byproducts. And the ashes are extended as molten slag. So your temperature, even though you have to control, but even it is higher it is in a liquid state. If it is liquid state, it will come down like a liquid. So the entrained flow gasifier, this is the very most important point, the entrained flow gasifier is the sole gasifier capable of processing all forms of coal. Okay? So that is why these are used most of the time in the industries. So let us see the drawing or the schematic of an entrained flow gasifier. So in this, as I told you, the it is a co plug flow type of character. So in this, what you have is, uh, you have a, let us say you have a rotating here screen, rotating screen and where you are feeding it continuously. So you have the feed screw like before, you have the feed screw, you have the hopper here present. So you have the coal coming here inside, coal dust. So it requires a finely dusted material. 
then uh, what you do is while it ends here, here you add oxygen and you add steam both. Then make it enter the gasifier, make it enter the gasifier. So, this is your gasifier. So, in this part you will have the let us say this is a liquid slag. And here you have the raw syn gas getting generated going out. So, these are then burnt actually you know you are sending this is I will say this is a burner. So, you are feeding the coal particles you are adding steam oxygen then burning it or this is lighting them. So, the same thing also happens here. So, this is So, you have the feeding just like the one which is to my left of the screen, you have the coal particles getting fed here, coal dust. Getting fed here, the coal dust here. Again, you are providing here oxygen, you are providing here steam. Okay. Once you provide these two outside, so you burn them these are the particles here. So, these are the coal particles getting uh, uh, reacted, you have the oxygen and steam setting them inside and then burn it. So, it means it is something like rotating part is there. So, like the coal particles here are almost heated. So, coal particles remember coal particles here this is an important part are heated to close to 1000 kelvins per second. This is the heating rate. So, you imagine such a high heating rate and this is one point another is your residence time that has to be very less in the order of seconds. So, these two you have to fix or manipulate so that you get only raw syn gas, carbon monoxide and hydrogen and no other byproduct. So, this is the greatest advantage and this is the most common gasifier which are used in the coal industries. So, for generating power. Okay. So, this is the way the entrant flow gasifier works. So, let us summarize what are the points we have seen. So, due to the counter current, so let us go through the comparison now because if I want to compare a best gasifier that is the entrant flow gasifier. I should compare also the other gasifiers, what are the pros and cons. So, the moving bed, the first one which we have just now studied, the counter current nature achieves the lowest exit temperature. Okay. So, it will have the lowest exit temperature, why? Because steam on oxygen is coming from the bottom, coal is coming from the top. So, obviously, the exit temperature will be less, the combustion temperature is less here. So, that is why what they did in order to compare all the gasifiers, they have find a term called as cold gas efficiency. It represents the chemical energy in the syn gas relative to the chemical energy in the entering coal and is a critical indicator of the efficiency of the coal gasification. Now, the issue is you have in the numerator CO plus H2 heating value and the denominator is determined by a heating value such that how much amount of steam is consumed to convert the coal per mole of coal. It is similar to like the enthalpy change which we discussed in the previous lecture. So, it is determined by the heating values at standard temperature at which H2O condenses therefore, the term cold gas efficiency. So, the ratio of how much of the outlet you have the syn gas and the heating content to how much of the chemical energy initially you have with the coal. So, moving bed and fluidized bed will have superior cold gas efficiency compared to entrant flow. So, reason is because in moving bed and fluidized bed you have gases other than syn gas. For example, hydrocarbons or methane. So, obviously, they will have higher heating value. So, if you see the cold gas efficiency expression, you have a term 
which refers to the heating value of the overall gases coming out in the numerator. So, the numerator syngas have some value, but along with syngas other gases are coming. So, other gases have far far higher value than syngas, which is usually the case for moving bed and the fluidized bed. So, you have the higher numerator means you have higher efficiency, but if you only talk about coal efficiency it may be incorrect because you need the syngas primarily because syngas can be converted to a number of compounds especially methanol, alcohol and uh, other compounds it is a because I have already discussed it is one of the base chemicals is syngas. So, that is what I have written due to the presence of methane and higher hydrocarbons which have a higher heating value the product gas is obviously lesser as compared to the first two processes. But then the status of the ash this has also been taken into account. So, we have to see when the ash is disposed can it leach can it leach into the soil or somewhere. See in the Lurgi or entrain flow ash here is a vitrified material. So, it means because of the high temperature as it passes through the liquid state. So, it will have limited leaching upon disposal ok that is why they are preferable easy to dispose the ash. So, if you let us say even if you put it outside they will not leach into the soil, but the low temperature is the primarily the low temperature means I am referring to the 1300 Kelvin Lurgi classifier and when I talk here Lurgi it is the 2000 Kelvin that British Lurgi classifier. In the low temperature if it is conducted which is primarily the one which is having uh, the gasifier operating with the rotating grate ash does not go through the molten phase if it does not go through the most in stage then it will be less inert. So, it has a high probability it may leach into the soil upon disposal. So, this is the status of the ash from all the gasifiers. So, let us see what are the different uh, points where we can consider these gasifiers from the industrial perspective. See first is the preferred coal type what is the preferred coal type? So, if I want to make a definition I will let us say I make 3 columns the moving bed, the Lurgi one I am not writing the names fluidized bed, Winkler one and then the entrained. the entrain flow ok. So, if these are the 3 different gasifiers so, what are the different components? What are the coal type that is important? Which one will we have? Let us say this is the part A. Which one will have? It can obviously, as I told you, it can handle all type of coal, but it will only need reactive coal, ok, fluidized bed, and he, this will require non caking coal. Now, you remember non caking coal. So, though we should not be formation of any cake at a certain temperature that is 1700 Kelvin. Then the coal size that is was the important coal size because while you crush them you are putting more energy. So, you should be very careful what should be the coal size. So, coal size if I want the diameter in millimeter. So, if it is in millimeter near about 3 to 50 millimeter is sufficient for moving bed. So, it is less than 5 mm in the case of fluidized bed and it is even less 0.1 millimeter in the case of entrainment. So, it is the lowest coal size is required. Then comes an important the gasifier temperature obviously this is very easy for you to answer because as I told you it will be the lowest in in Kelvin gasifier temperature exit temperature. So, it will be lowest for this close to 1250 Kelvin it will be around uh, 1300 roughly on an average while this will be pretty high it is ranging from 1600 to 2200 ok. Then uh, another important aspect we have to see is the outlet temperature. So, this is the inside the temperature and the outlet temperature is so it is cooled bit so it is 700 Kelvin so again the trend is similar 1115 Kelvin and then you have 1200 to 1850 Kelvin. So, it means there are two things one is what is inside the temperature gasifier and the outlet temperature. So, outlet temperature obviously will be least in moving bed because of the counter current nature. Then E carbon conversion how much is conversion? So, 
So, how much have I fed in? How much it has converted? So, it is almost 99 percent it is converted. Here it will be close to 95 to 97 percent. Here it will be 99 percent. So, as I told you fluidized bed because the char particles get separated from the cyclone. So, the conversion is not at all 100 percent. Then comes the how much we should see how much is the oxygen has been compound O2 consumed. So, we can write kg of O2 per kg of coal this is one unit. So, if you see let us say if it is a dry ash type of coal when the coal is producing only dry ash you require less oxygen, but in the case of fluidized bed you want to make the action reaction happen the 0.71, but in the entrained flow you will have close to 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. So, the moving bed will have the lowest combustion of consumption of oxygen, but the other two beds will have higher amount of oxygen. So, obviously then this is because you have the it is called counter current. So, you just need to just you know to control the temperature of the combustion zone. Then the coal gas efficiency. is also given as percentage. So, it is 84 percent for dry ash when the coal produces dry ash, it is 81 to 85 for fluidized bed and it is less 74 to 81 percent. So, why it is less I told you is 84 because there are not a byproducts other than syn gas which has a higher heating value. This is the reason it has a higher coal gas efficiency. Okay. So, throughput is another important aspect throughput how much can we handle per day throughput that is if I want to write here tons per day close to throughput temperature here not temperature the production rate varies from 500 to 1500 tons per day it is very high 3000. So, it is capable of and while this one is close to 5000 that is the reason the industry prefer the entrant flow reactor. So, O2 consumption is very important so as the carbon conversion. Okay. So, these are the different uh, ratios. So, this is what a rough guideline which is also presented in the book of Maulin. I have just explained it one by one. It may not it may vary with different gasifiers and also with coal types, but in general I have given some ranges and the values suppose I have given out a value it represents the average value across all gasifier. Okay. It is not for a particular gasification or a particular moving bed or fluidized bed gasifier. So, now what is the outlet gas coming out from the gasifier? We also need to see that. So, there are three distinct gas composition occurring from three types of gasifiers. They are mostly owing to their varying operating temperatures. So, you have different operating temperatures for all the three gasifiers. This will rely on reactor design and are regulated by the amount of oxygen and steam provided to the gasifier. For example, in the moving bed reactor you have to maintain a low combustion temperature. So, if you have a low combustion temperature you need to put more amount of oxygen, I am sorry you need to provide more amount of steam. So, excess steam and low oxygen is required. So, excess steam lowering the temperature, but also lowering obviously lowering the oxygen consumption which is exactly what we have seen in the previous slide you require less amount of oxygen which is consumed because the issue is you have to manage the temperature control the temperature, but in an entrant flow reactor nothing it has a short residence time. So, high temperatures are necessary to achieve high reaction time. So, in that case it does the opposite the oxygen to steam is very high because you need to have a quick reaction short residence time do not allow them to form other products do the reaction and let the gases escape. So, that is the way you control the residence time. So, if I want to compare the types of exit gas composition we have to go back to our previous lecture. So, where we did what was that we drew one y axis and then one x axis. Okay. So, this x axis is the composition. So, if I want to make from 0 here this is 2 means 20 percent, this is 40 percent, this is 60 percent, this is 80 percent, this is 100 percent. So, I would say this is the composition. 
the composition. Composition of the outlet gas. Then uh, what I will do because there is no point writing temperature below 600, 600 then I will write down 800, then 1000, 1200, then 1400, then 1600, then 1800. So, this is the temperature in Kelvin. So, if you see now if I want to make, so the steam production goes like this. So, this is for H2O. Okay. So, now for CO, I am assuming this is CO, then the hydrogen production hydrogen production okay then you have the ca methane and carbon dioxide also co2 so it will start this i have discussed in the previous class so this is co2 and then you have the methane production also coming out here okay so they are all consumed and at higher temperature the endothermic reaction will rule so they will have only higher temperature co and h2 is the property. So, where does the moving bed? So, in the moving bed what happens is most of the moving bed reactors this is the row zone actually. So, in this moving bed so this is the zone as I told you around 700 Kelvin this is the working temperature. So, what you have you see this methane carbon dioxide CO then H2 and this methane means on not only methane it also represents other compounds such as aromatic compounds, phenolic compounds. In short I have written methane I have included all the gases composition. So, you see most of the gases which are produced from a moving bed gasifier is complex mixture along with syngas various other products. While this is not the true for entrained or the fluidized bed, fluidized bed somewhere it is around 1200. So, 1200 your fluidized bed is something like this, it is this composition where you get the gases fluidized bed because I told you the temperature of operation is 1200 to 400. Then the remaining, the remaining part which I am not drawn here, the remaining part, this part, if I want to draw this part is primarily entrained flow. So, in this if you see because it requires a higher amount of steam to oxygen, sorry other way down it requires more amount of oxygen to steam because to control the resistance time. This part is called the entrained flow entrained gasifier. So, in an entrained gasifier at that temperature you see you only have carbon monoxide and hydrogen that is the same gas no other things are possible. Okay? No other gas are possible that is why we say the entrained gas gasifier is the mostly used in the industries. So, moving bed, complex mixture of hydrocarbons, fluidized bed, more of syngas, but there are still some amount of other hydrocarbons, but entrain gasifier only syngas. So, it means a low temperature moving bed technique produces the most complicated gas composition. The conversion of hydrocarbons is not yet complete because in the low temperature moving bed, the conversion is not complete because carbon dioxide is present. In reality, the composition is more complex than depicted because several additional hydrocarbons are present. So, in the plot, I have only considered methane, it means in the methane, I have added all other hydrocarbons. Due to the counter current mode of operation, the exit of the moving bed reactors also contains substantial quantities of tars, oils, and phenolic liquids. So, it means the exit means along with the ash you will also find this tar, oil and phenolic liquids in the moving bed. So, moving bed is at all not, at all not justified to be used. So, it means that uh, we have, so obviously the moving bed will require extensive and costly syngas cleaning. So, an entrain flow reactor is run with a higher oxygen to coal ratio which is a quite the reason and less steam which will result in a lower hydrogen to oxygen ratio. So, the products which are coming out is a lower hydrogen to oxygen means more amount of carbon monoxide less amount of hydrogen. So, oxygen atoms are more in carbon monoxide. So, it will have higher amount of oxygen to hydrogen or lower amount of hydrogen to oxygen. So, it will create a gas with a high concentration of both carbon monoxide and lower concentration of hydrogen. 
So, virtually this is the major reason no hydrocarbons are present. Okay? So, if I want to uh, write down what are the different compounds, see the composition if I want to write down what are the composition of the gases present. What are the composition of gases? What are the gases which is possible? You may have water, you may have H2, you may have CO, you may have CO2, you may have methane, you may have carbonyl sulphide, COS, you may have hydrogen sulphide or you may have ammonia plus hydrocyanide, this type of molecules or some inert, inert because you are adding oxygen. So, if I uh, moving bed, uh, if I compare them, the moving bed then the fluidized bed and then the entrained flow. So, roughly see you will have most of this compounds here in moving bed. If I write down only CO and H2 in composition, it is remaining I mean you must be knowing 52.2 near about this is a particular coal from US. So, others will be there. So, if I want to tick it means they are there and the other components are these gases. In a fluidized bed if I want to compare the syn gas if you see the composition it is only 27.7 of hydrogen is reverse because more amount of oxygen is in fluidized bed and the carbon monoxide is 54.6. Okay. So, still we will have some steam available here you will also have some carbon dioxide and methane available here. This will be almost be negligible carbonyl sulphide. This will be less but uh, very less amount. So, even I will make a uh, compound here. Then coming to the entrain flow, uh, you will have very less amount of this but more amount of the carbon monoxide that is hydrogen if I compare with the hydrogen entrain flow it is around 26.7. So, this is 63.1. So, if you add them up, it is close to 90 percent. So, 90 percent of the gases which are coming out from the entrain flow are of syn gas. Okay. So, these gases will be very less. You have nitrogen obviously we here, but this one is almost negligible, this part carbonyl or sulphide, hydrogen sulphide or ammonia, this will be very less. And this is also if I want to write in numbers in carbon dioxide is 1.5, this will be close to 4.7 percent carbon dioxide and this will be pretty high it is 5.6 percent. Okay. So, this is again very less methane, water it will be steam it is there it is less more or less all the steam quantities are measurable, but the importance is in the entrain flow. See the entrain flow 90 percent of the gases are of syngas. Now, one of the important point is if you see these compounds this one this one these two compounds if it is present in the exit of the outlet gas it will create a problem, you cannot use it directly for an implication. So, that is the reason why entrain flow is used because the amount of carbonyl sulphide and H2S is very, very low. So, carbonyl sulphide is close to around 0 0.1 percent and while H2S is 1.3 percent. Now, these two values can be cleaned called as acid gas, these are called acid gas. So, this acid gas cleaning is there and this hydrogen sulphide if they are separated they can be used in the class process for the production of elemental sulphur. Same with COS, the carbonyl sulphide can be converted to H2S and they can be again, so if they are hydrogenated, they will be converted into halogen sulphide and then they can be used in the class process for the production of sulphur. So, that is another section which we will study, but the, for the time being, please remember entry and grand flow gives the highest amount of syngas. So, with this I will conclude this lecture and then though you should go through this textbook and follow the different uh, gasifiers, the norms which I have discussed. In the next lecture, we will consider the integrated gas cycle. So, we will see how we are using syngas to get chemicals as well as for production of power. Thank you. Mm -hmm.